right? Let's have it. For classic film lovers, November is the month to celebrate shadows and fog, hard-boiled P.I.s and femme fatales, the dark underbelly of crime and fatalistic narratives, haunted pasts and surrealistic imagery, narrations of despair and striking imagery. For classic film lovers, November is the month of film noir. The richness, psychological complexity, and expressionistic style of film noir remains appealing to this day. This subgenre emerged as a fully-fledged movement as a way of tackling the general feeling of dread and cynicism in American culture surrounding the horrors of World War II and the atomic bomb paranoia that followed it. During its classic period, which according to the consensus among film historians happened between 1941 and 1958, noir films weren't exactly popular box office draws. In fact, they were often relegated by big studios to the bottom half of double bills, meaning the movie that most filmgoers skipped. It wasn't until the late 50s and early 60s that this subgenre started gaining a different culture appreciation, in no small part thanks to a group of French filmmakers slash critics, Eric Romer, François Truffaut, Claude Chabrol, and Jean-Luc Godard, among others, rebelled against the classic canon promulgated by American critics and started re-examining underappreciated works of Hollywood auteurs like Robert Siodmak, Fritz Lang, Jacques Tourneau, Robert Aldrich, and Nicholas Ray. Godard and company not only wrote extensively about these filmmakers and their films for the prestigious magazine Cahiers du Cinéma, but also went as far as filtering their narratives of love, fate, and death through a pop culture and transgressive lens in their own movies, revamping the subgenre for a new and more rebellious generation. Pourquoi tu veux pas coucher avec moi? Parce que je voudrais savoir. Il y a quelque chose chez vous que j'aime, mais je ne sais pas quoi. Of course. Part of the appeal of film noir is the combination of its stylistic writing and visual language. Noir's writing is rooted in the hard-boiled pulp novels of Dashiell Hammett, Raymond Chandler, and James M. Cain, but also the naturalistic style of authors like Ernest Hemingway. Visually, the genre draws mostly from German expressionism of the 20s and 30s, namely the chiaroscuro lighting, distorted camera angles, and striking production design. Some defend that M, from German filmmaker Fritz Lang, is the first ever noir, or at least the prototype for what noir was to become. The film, starring Peter Lorre in his first leading role, was also Lang's first incursion into the world of talkies and depicts the story of a serial killer who preys on children and becomes the target of a city-wide manhunt. The subject matter is dark enough, but Lang goes the extra mile by populating the screen with gritty and grisly streets, grotesque faces, and meditating on the nature of good and evil. Furthermore, the film delves into the helplessness of fate and toys around with being a morality play, both characteristics that would later become trademarks of classic film noir. In fact, more than the plots of corruption and violence, what's so enduringly appealing about film noir is its thematic explorations. Most films in this subgenre are about someone with a shadowy past and a cynical attitude towards society and its institutions who, battered by a guilty conscience, decide to search for the truth in an underworld of crime and despicableness. Noir films capture the viewer's imagination by getting under their skin, by roping them in with a seductive world and then unmasking it brutally and unflinchingly. Noirs are like earthquakes that way, they bring everything to the surface. No truth remains hidden. No lie remains unmasked, no fuckery goes unnoticed. Most pressingly though, it's the idea of fate that permeates through these narratives like an itch that can be scratched. How do I know? Because my little man tells me. What little man? The little man in here. Every time one of these phonies comes along, he ties knots in my stomach. I can't eat. These are nightmare worlds that drag their unlucky protagonists to their inevitable end. Ultimately, noir films, at least the good ones, the ones that have transcended time, are character studies and sociological investigations above all else. They are as strong as the men and women that front them, and as incisive as the acidic writing that composes them. We're friends, Harvey. We go as far back as when you were a fresh kid congressman, don't we? Why is it that everything you say sounds like a threat? Maybe it's a mannerism, because I don't threaten friends. But why furnish your enemies with ammunition? We love film noir here at Mouth Film, so stick around as we celebrate Noir Vember with five of our all-time favorites. <laughs>